Hey, Fed Heads. Cigar Surgeon here with another Cigar Federation video review. Today we're going to be viewing the Hammer & Sickle Tradition. See that nice Connecticut shade wrapper there, American Connecticut shade. It's a big boy, it's a Churchill, 748 MSRP on this is nine bucks. As with a lot of uh, traditional Connecticut shade wrappers, falls in the mild to mild medium-ish uh, category in terms of strength. Uses Dominican binder, Dominican filler. Has been sitting in my humidor uh, for a little while now. It's had a little bit of a chance to rest. This was a sampler sent to us by Hammer and Sickle. We featured the Kalanok 25 on sharing our pairings a little while ago, and as a part of that package, they sent us some samplers for review. So I'm getting around to that now. Pretty excited to try this out. Been kind of on a Connecticut shade kicker for a while, so looking forward to trying this out. So again, Churchill 7x48, so it's big bad boy. Probably going to be about two and a half hours roughly of smoking time. See, so got that nice Hammer and Sickle wrapper or uh, hammer and sickle band, I should say, on there. So let's get to the nose here. Lots of uh, dry wood, a little bit of hay. Pretty, pretty, pretty much what I expect from Connecticut Shade. Lots of hay in the foot, dry hay. That's about it. So we'll get the lighting, we'll get the cutting, and we'll get the smoking here. 48 rain gauge, I'm gonna use my single torch here for this. As always, just kind of rotating the flame around the foot, making sure not to scorch the wrapper. You just don't want the flame to touch. That's really the trick, so. When you start to see the uh, embers off the end of the foot, you know you've got the flame close enough without the flame actually touching. All right, so we've got a nice nice toast going on there. Should be good to go for a cut. So I'm gonna use my Zykar V cutter, which is kind of my standard now. Draws in the ideal zone. Initial impressions are um, sweet graham cracker, a little bit of uh, subtle dry wood post draw. That's about it. We'll see if we can get enough of a draw here to get a retro hill going. Getting some coffee on the retro hill, which is interesting. Can't say I get a lot of coffee typically off Connecticut. Connecticut shade cigars blended. That's interesting. So we've got a lot of cigar to go here. I'll check back in when uh, when we detect some profile changes. We're about seven minutes in, and I'm getting detecting um, a fair amount of leather post draw uh, with a little bit of spices almost. I call it spice, but really what it is, it's a white pepper that's sort of rounding it out. So I get that leather. And the leather has a you know a, a big mouth feel to it, and then the, I can just taste that that white pepper sort of rounding it out. It's interesting. I don't typically get a lot of that on a on a Connecticut shade blend, so uh, interesting in, interesting start. And you can see that we're we're I mean first of all there's a very extremely clean burn line there, but uh, we're not very far in, so uh, we'll we'll keep checking in. Just passing the 20 minute mark, and there's some creaminess adding to the profile. Very interesting start. I mean, it's got a lot of richness for a Connecticut Shade blend. Talking a little bit about the blend, uh, if you go to Hammer & Sickle's website, they've got a really nice write-up. Apparently, it's uh, three, three-year-old uh, Dominican tobaccos in the filler, and then they use a five-year-aged Connecticut Shade wrapper. So that's pretty impressive for a Connecticut Shade cigar. They describe it as a rich and creamy smoke, uh, walking the line between mild and medium with great leather, which we kind of already talked about, and rare spice notes throughout, and definitely getting a little bit of that spice, although for me it's presenting more of a, as a pepper. So we'll see if we uh, detect any of those spice notes as the first third continues here. Casually hitting the 30 minute mark here, talking a little bit about the profile. It's all kind of coming together, the creaminess on the retrohale, creaminess on the regular draw, you get the little bit of drying cedar post draw mixed in with the leather and then some lingering white pepper. Great start to this cigar. Um, one thing to comment on is I am finding the, the, like I said, the drying cedar. It's got a bit of a drying mouthfeel to it. So I'm kind of wishing I had something to pair with here. Um, not sure what that would be. I'll have to let the cigar sort of settle in and see what other notes come to the uh, come to the forefront. But as you can see, with only half an hour of smoking time, there's a ton of cigar left. So we'll check back in and see how's it, how it progresses. Coming up on the one hour mark and still really in the first third, probably in the middle third in the next five or 10 minutes here, but this is pretty leisurely smoke, enjoying it very much. Not a lot else to report on the flavor profile. It's settled in nicely. Kind of talked about that previously. Kind of interested to see where this goes in the middle third, see if there's any transitions as it goes in the middle third and see what the flavor profile is there. Past the one hour mark, you can see the burn line on this is still fabulous. I mean, it's been burning excellent throughout. Nice and cool, tasty flavors. In the middle, as it transitions in the middle third here, the leather has really stepped up to about a medium strength, uh, especially really on the post draw. 
It's got a very thick mouthfeel to it, so it's it's really dominating the profile post draw. Um, that's some of the spices they talked about on the website are starting to come through now, kind of mixing in with that pepper that I was talking about throughout the first third. And throughout the regular draw, there's this really nice creaminess. It kind of brings it all together. So we'll see if there's any flavor changes in the middle third and how it progresses as it goes. Passing the one hour and 10 mark, really the profile change that stood out here is along with that post draw leather, I'm getting this sort of earthy, uh, not a sharp earth, just sort of a light earth. The leather's kind of running it over, but it's rounding out the post draw. So you get post draw leather, post draw earth, post draw spices, post draw pepper, which is, that's a lot of profile for a Connecticut shade blend. So this, you know, the, the profile is, is certainly leading up to more of a medium profile. I think this was, uh, I was expecting more of a mild to a mild medium, but this, this is absolutely leading up to a medium profile. This, this cigar has a lot of body to it, and I'm really interested to see how this continues on for the middle third and certainly in the last third. Hitting the halfway point of the middle third and there's some smokiness coming through. I know that sounds really strange to describe, but it's like a barbecue smokiness. Not very strong at about a um, light medium strength, but it's interesting. It adds more complexity to that uh, regular draw, kind of mixes in with all the other flavors that are present. It's, it's, this is a very complex Connecticut shade profile and I'm really enjoying it. Um, we'll see if there's any other flavor changes in the middle third. Probably have another 15 to 20 minutes before I get into the last third. Getting in, moving into the last third here, and the earth is really starting to take over the profile. Uh, started out at a light medium, it's really at a medium, maybe medium plus. So it's overtaking the leather, it's kind of overtaking the creaminess between draws. Uh, again, I think, you know, if I had a pairing here, I think that would offset that a little bit, but we'll see if that sort of subsides. Sometimes if you get a lot of earthiness in the middle third, it kind of subsides in the last third. So we'll see what happens as the uh, last third settles in. So as the uh, last third starts to settle in here, I'm getting a little bit of a sour note, not a off-putting sour note, but like a, a fruity sour note. And it's on the regular draw, it kind of carries through in the post draw. So you get that sour note on the draw, and then you, you hit the post draw and you get that sort of bold earthiness, and they're kind of competing against each, each other. So we'll see what else happens here in the last third. No real other profile change to report on here. The earthiness is still kind of dominating the profile. The sour note's still there. Um, again, just adding a little bit of body to the uh, to the last third. Wrapping up the Hammer and Sickle Tradition series, the Churchill. Very enjoyable cigar. A lot more body than I anticipated for a Connecticut Shade wrapper. No doubt as a result of that well-aged uh, filler tobacco. Um, you have to look for the review of this at cigarfederation.com. Be an interesting write-up. And we'll be back next week with another Cigar Federation video review. Thanks very much for checking it out. If you want to give us an up, thumbs up, vote, or a comment on our video, we certainly appreciate it. You can always email us here, surgeon at cigarfederation.com.